Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorial. This week, I'm going to be following up on what I discussed previously, events first discovery and modeling, and it had to do with event storming to DDD tactical design. And as promised, part two of this discussion is event storming to event sourcing. So we'll look into event sourced aggregates today. If you enjoy watching my Design Accelerator tutorials, please like and subscribe to my channel. Appreciate it very much. If you didn't watch my previous tutorial, I suggest that you go do that now. In that tutorial, I discussed design level event storming. That was the eventuality. I first introduced big picture event storming. And I showed you that we can basically derive from the event storming an aggregate type. That is event sourced, so it extends a super type event sourced. It has a state, it has a command handler that takes parameters, and inside, the command request must pass a command policy using the parameters that are incoming and likely the current state. And if it does pass the policy, then we can apply a new domain event using an event sourced aggregate approach. So let's look into the details of this now. The concrete example that I'm using for this specific tutorial is from my book, Implementing Domain-Driven Design. If you haven't read the book, I suggest that you do. I'm not trying to sell you a book, but this is a very important book for anyone interested in implementing domain-driven design. So there's one way to do that, and that's obtain the book and read it. The example that I'm using is the Agile Project Management context. This is a Scrum-based context. You don't have to like Scrum to appreciate the example. I don't particularly like Scrum, but there are worse things in the world than Scrum. So the example is the Agile Project Management context. And the three, three of the more important primary aggregates in this context are the product, the Scrum product, a sprint that is within the product. So a sprint takes place within the software product, and a backlog item that is both a part of the product, so there is a product backlog and the backlog item is a part of the product. A backlog item is also committed to a specific sprint. And the example that I have here is where a command commit to sprint will be executed on the backlog item, but before the backlog item can be committed to the sprint, it has to pass, the, the command must pass a commitment policy. And if the commitment policy is passed and the commit to command can be properly executed on the backlog item, then a backlog item committed event will be emitted from the backlog item. You can see here the code for this, or at least a portion of the code, public class backlog item extends event sourced. So this is an event sourced aggregate that extends the event sourced supertype. We have a backlog item state represented by the state object, and we have the command method. This handles the command commit to, and we pass in the parameter sprint. You can see that the commitment policy must pass, and it passes with the state and the sprint. So we check to see if this can be committed, and if it is possible to commit, we are going to apply backlog item committed with the state ID and the sprint. Now I want to draw your attention to the ubiquitous language here and the fluency of the model. So kind of as a side note, but actually a very important part of domain-driven design is the fluency expressed in the ubiquitous language. So we're not only matching up nouns with the kinds of nouns that exist in an agile project management context, in a sprint-based context, 
product sprint backlog item, but notice the fluency of the language in terms of the verb, the command commit to sprint. So this reads backlog item commit to sprint. Very similar to the way the team would express themselves while they're discussing a backlog item that is committed to a sprint. So we want to try to adhere to the language as expressively, as fluently, and exactly explicitly as possible. Now, another thing to note here, what is this apply a backlog item committed to the backlog item? Well, first of all, before I jump into that, notice here that backlog item committed also very expressive with state ID and sprint. So we're applying backlog item committed with the state ID and the sprint. So again, very fluent expression. Now, what does apply mean? Apply is implemented by the event sourced supertype, the base class. The apply does two things. First of all, it takes the backlog item committed event and adds it to an internal collection of all events that have been applied during this one command execution. You could apply multiple events, but in this case, we are only applying one event during this specific scenario, commit to sprint. The second thing that it does, the apply method must call back on the backlog item in order for the backlog item committed to be applied actually to the state so we're going to transition the state of the backlog item so that the state is transitioned based on this new backlog item committed event. Why is that necessary? Well, when the event sourced supertype calls back on the backlog item, it will use a when method or some other method name. When backlog item committed and we pass in the event and then we transition the state state equals state with commitment to sprint, the event sprint. The reason that this is necessary is that when a backlog item or any event source aggregate is reconstituted from nothing, we must reinstantiate and reconstitute the entire state of the backlog item one event at a time in the order in which those events occurred. But we must not cause the command method to be run again. So in other words, we're separating the command from the application of the event onto the state. That enables the backlog item to be reconstituted one event at a time until the state reflects the most recent event as each event in the entire stream of the aggregate has been applied back to it. A huge mistake that's made with aggregate design in general is that a lot of software developers, a lot of programmers are really interested in just learning the technicalities of aggregates. They're really concerned about the transactionality of it or whether or not composing an aggregate a certain way is the right way to go. Or, for example, how does event sourcing work in a technical way? Why do we name it the when method? Well, all of these things are just sort of part of the magic aggregate. That's really not the biggest concern that we should have. For example, I was really emphasizing the need to be fluent and explicit in the ubiquitous language. So, for example, Consider the magic aggregate to be just a hot spot, a hot mess for that matter. And what we really want to focus on is the aggregate design policy. If I was going to use a hot spot, I would call the magic aggregate thought process a hot mess. And what we should really be focusing on with domain driven design is the aggregate design itself according to the ubiquitous language. We want it to be explicit. We want it to be fluent. We want it to be expressive. This is what the real focus 
should be. And for that matter, event sourcing is not really a new concept. Actually, you could go back 30, 40, or more years and find the application of event sourcing in a lot of different applications, especially in financial services applications. Event sourcing concepts have existed for a long time. I understand that by kind of replaying this instruction, this kind of tutorial over and over again, is important for those who are brand new to the industry or just learning these concepts for the first time. Maybe you've never heard of event sourcing before, but these ideas are relatively straightforward, but what is not straightforward what continues to be missed by the software industry is the importance of the boundary, the bounded context, and a ubiquitous language within that context, and expressing the software as an overall design according to the language of the business, what the business speaks, and constraining that bounded context by bounded context. So the aggregate design policy, if I were talking about aggregate design from an event storming perspective, I would have a policy, aggregate design policy, where the important things are the explicitness of expression, the fluency, and making sure that the overall design is expressive, adhering to the ubiquitous language. This is really the most important thing about aggregate design, whether or not you are using event sourcing. What I'm driving at is we need to focus on the quality of communication. It's the quality of communication among people who are involved in both the business and the technology, people who are working together on products, on projects. The quality of data tends to be very, very low. The quality of the software that produces the data tends to be very, very low. One way that we can improve vastly is in the quality of the communication, not only among individuals, but within the software itself. How do we improve the quality? Again, we give attention to the ubiquitous language. We raise the quality of the communication between computing components. And we also adhere to the ubiquitous language in the events, in the data that we produce. These could be views, for example, from the idea of the views, the query views that are available, making explicit and very good decisions in terms of the attributes, the properties that we put into events and the data. We know that coming from a big ball of mud, a legacy system, the quality is inferior. We are basically dealing with rows in a database. Sometimes the data coming from the database has rows with columns that are encoded where they could be multiple columns, but instead it's several forms of data packed into a single column. I've seen this many times. The data coming from a legacy system is just going to be difficult to deal with. Why do we want to continue with that trend when we could raise the quality within naming, within the kinds of data, putting clean data such as a query view and the events that become available to other systems? Well, one way that we can do that is not only by producing clean data, but having a kind of event hub that helps us to clean up the data by adding quality into the data as it arrives. This can be some heavy lifting here. Sometimes we think of this as ETL, but the idea is this is not flowing into a kind of data warehouse right now. There could be some data storage here. There could be a lot of data storage in the event hub, but the point is that we're raising the quality within this, and anything that emits from this kind of event hub will be higher quality, the highest quality available to the business. So we could accept that even rows in a database are a kind of event. Query views are a kind of event, and of course explicit events are, the kind, are a kind of event, but as they flow into this event hub, 
they can become very high quality events for outgoing systems. They can be combined, merged, aggregated together. There are a lot of different options here to produce very high quality events. A new company named Current is working on just such an event hub. Event hub is not itself a product, but it's representative of a platform and several tools that will become available. This company Current has essentially evolved out of what was previously known as Event Store or Event Store DB. You could say that Current has acquired a database asset in Event Store and they're completely taking a new approach to streaming data and events. So we can expect a lot from Current in the future, I think. I was in a meeting today with some current representatives and it was very interesting to learn about what they are working on and I look forward to seeing more. So if you want to check into this, navigate in your browser to current.io. This has been brought to you by my company Kalele. Thanks for attending today. I appreciate it. I have an upcoming workshop at the end of March 2025. I welcome you to join us there. I look forward to meeting you. You can find our company at kalele.io and the workshop information is found at kalele.io slash iddd-workshop. I look forward to meeting you soon. Until next time, take care.